Entrepreneurs from around the world are flocking here, so I'm so curious to find out what's going on. I have no idea what that would mean to the people here. This is what we have, but we can change it. Very necessary, the neighborhood is a unity. Passion is the main driver for making your working life satisfied. Love your life, love your work, and put passion on it. Imagine living in a place where you're cut off from some of the basic factors in life. The perfect next step in our journey. What's behind all this change? So come on, let's go check it out. Hello, Colombia. I've been waiting such a long time to meet you. It's like amazing to be here. In parks, it's a really, it's a beautiful country, but it's also got this, this vibrant energy. So it feels like this awesome place to be right now. But it's also got so much going on in the work world, so much going on in the world of work. Right now in this city, Medellin, it's like this entrepreneurial hotspot. Entrepreneurs from around the world are flocking here. So I'm so curious to find out what's going on. What's behind all this change? One thing is clear, this country is a land of change. And not just today, it's been changing, it's been reinventing itself over and over again for a long time. For those who are new to this Working Around the World project, this learning adventure is to spend a year intensely exploring work in 12 countries around the world. Because when you're exploring the human relationship with work, when you're trying to understand what allows work to become truly fulfilling in people's lives? You want to come to places that are different. And this country is different. It's got a history that shows the bright side of people's hard work and the dark side. But also it's got this energy that you can't help but feel when you're here. But aside from those big headlines, what I'm here to learn about are the unique stories, the personal stories that help us better understand the human relationship with work. So I knew Colombia was filled with mountains and jungles, but I had no idea. I had no idea what that would mean to the people here. I mean, right here in Medellin, it's like taking a three to four million person city and dropping it into a tight little valley that's got steep mountains and jungle and creeks all around it. And that's what this city's like. And so, for the people here, I mean, the environmental landscape totally shapes the social landscape. It can be the difference between being connected with your community or totally cut off. Just imagine what it would mean to your day-to-day -day life if you were living on hills and slopes that split communities into layers. It makes a big part of people's work and drive to focus on access. And when you apply that to what it might mean here, or what it's meant here, over decades and centuries. I mean, it really starts to tell you the story about how work has formed here in Colombia. And that's what is so interesting here. What has seemed to define Colombia's relationship with work is its incredibly beautiful, fruitful, and challenging land. It's geography. Because what this land has meant to people is that you're either in a location to transact with others, or you're not. You either have access to people, to jobs, to police, to security, or you're cut off from it because of its truly unique and incredible land. And that's why it's been hard to put my finger on the specific challenge here in Colombia. Because the country itself is a big part of the challenge. I think many people say Medellin is the most resilient city in the world, and I agree. And the urban transformation and the social transformation, you can see it and you can feel it. Yes, the people here have needed to be resilient. Because having access to what you're seeking hasn't always been easy. The lesson in Columbia was access. It's one of the basic ingredients of work. The ability to simply come in contact with people. 
resources, needs. How else does work form? It doesn't. And for many people in Colombia, for one reason or another, not all of these basic pieces have been able to easily fall into place. Medellin has a unique problem where it feels like the growth of the city is outracing the administration. During the last 20 years, Medellin has grown so fast due to migration. People have been flocking to the cities. Why? For access to the life they're hoping for, willing to work for. It's not unique to Colombia. We see this around the world, but imagine what you find when you come to a city like Medellin. You left a farm, dreaming of a better life, dreaming of better work, better safety, better education, but you get to a city that's in the middle of mountains. So the only place to live is up in the hills. Even though you're right on the edge of the city, you're still disconnected from many of the things you dreamed of. So instead of building a better life, you build a life on the margin. Because you live on steep slopes, your kids have trouble getting into school or getting to work. Frustration mounts. Unemployment's a likely result. It gets easier to fall into gangs, violence, drugs. Columbia has a storied past. And it happens despite best intentions because you are dreaming of more, but lacking of what many of us take for granted. Access to the things that allow you to move and connect and learn and work. The, the local people have understand their role in the transformation and what's their, their piece in this, in this chapter, like how they can change the, the city. The change. It started by people driving the difference they wanted to see. But it's been people knowing what's most important and not letting go. It's very, very necessary to, for the happiness. The happiness is the change. The solidarity is the firm for the neighborhood advance. Communities came together. They've been taking on the challenges together. The government's doing its part. They've been working to give people access and have needed to do it in innovative ways. This is not your usual geography. So they've used things like cable cars and outdoor escalators to get people connected, help them access work, access opportunity, transform their communities. When we are from the public uh, sector, we, we can choose, but we forget what the client, you know, the final client mm -hmm. is the community, mm -hmm. because they will enjoy this infrastructure. So with these escalators, we find that the escalators itself, they, they work as public transport, yes, it works, but it's not enough. Mm. You need the community, you need this kind of guys, uh, feeling that these kind of products are, are from them, are from the community, are from the neighborhood and this transform these kind of projects and they also change the environment. It's amazing and an important reminder for all of us. Work is built on a few but very essential factors and access to others, access to opportunities right at the core. How else does work begin? And Colombia was such a beautiful, hard, emotional, necessary lesson for me. To learn as I research work all around the world. At its most basic level, when work isn't working, why is that? Ask the question, do people have access? Or are they on the margin? The margin of contact, the margin of stereotypes, the margin of a history that's not in their favor. What then? Because what I've been learning beyond a shadow of a doubt is that when communities have a chance to rise up, they will. Because people are looking for the same things. People want to improve lives, their own and others. They want to have a positive impact. What they need is access. And sometimes they're willing to fight for it in inspiring ways. The lesson is for all of us. This is country 6 of 12, and in this series, all have given us something to think about. In Colombia, it went right down to the foundation of it all. Work can only begin when people have the chance. All of our greater work is to give access to everyone.
and I'll see you next time from Argentina.